So a quick story uh, to start. When I was in my mid-20s, a really good friend of mine came to my house, and she was distraught, in tears. And she had a, sto a stack of credit card statements, and she said, I just can't get these credit cards paid off, and I'm not spending very much money, but I just can never get them paid down. And so looking at the credit card statements, I realized that she was only making the monthly minimum payments. And I asked her why, and she said, because that's what the credit card companies ask for each month. And so I explained to her that if you spend $40 at Walmart, and then when your credit card statement comes, and you only pay off $10 of the $40, they charge you interest on the $30. And I showed her what her credit card um, a percentage rate was and so she looked at me and said what how do you know this now she and I went all through middle school junior high and high school together we went to a small school where we sat side by side in almost every class accounting econ all those math classes and yet for some reason um, my friend did not get the information that she needed and as we talked about it, she said, I guess I probably just didn't think it was very important to learn all that stuff. My research paper was over student motivation. And I studied John M. Keller's uh, ARCS model for motivational learning. It's a prescriptive design approach um, to motivate students in your classroom. And it shows you how to prepare your lessons so that they um, naturally include that motivation. Now, um, ARCS is an, ac is an acronym and the first letter is A and according to Keller A, um, he says the first thing you have to do with students is get their attention and one way to get their attention is using immediacy being physically or psychologically close to your students and they fill that with you so he has um, several student surveys in his um, in his book entitled motivational design for learning and performance the ARCS model approach, it's available online at Liberty University or from Amazon for under $100. It's a bargain. Um, when we create immediacy, we are building a relationship with our students and we are getting to know our students. And in that way, um, we will ease, more easily grab their attention. The next component in the model is relevance. So what? What's in it for me? I'm sure we've all heard that. Um, and student, those student surveys that you do to help gain their attention will also help you know what the student's interests are. And then that way you can take whatever content it is that you're teaching and um, relate it to the students to make the content relevant to each of the students. You want to pique their curiosity. One video that I watched said it so well. It said, um, relevance is the intersection of what students want and what teachers need to teach. So we have the students wants this way and what we want, and that intersection is where we all need to meet. And that's our job as teachers. We also want to make sure that students are setting goals and we're oriented in those goals within our classroom. The next com component is confidence. Confidence it is something that we need to instill and we have to build in our students. So we're taking what they already know, their background knowledge in our content area, and we're scaffolding. And we're, we're, you know, we're building here and here and then here and here. And as we continue to get um, uh, into more difficult information in our content area, we're giving students an opportunity for success, whether it's small uh, quizzes over vocabulary, or maybe it's a quick activity to just see what they know. Um, I love to use Kahoot, even in my college classes. It's a great little tool to just test what they know, and then they know what they know, and I don't even have to take a grade for it. But give them small successes, give them personal control. Make sure that your instructions are clear and explicit and you have rubrics that are set up so that students know what's expected of them. I use a mini research paper in the fall as a tool to um, 
help them learn what's going to be required of them when they write the big research paper in the spring in my junior English class. And since I've started doing that, I've had a lot more success with that big paper. Once we've instilled confidence in the students, they're gonna have satisfaction, which is the last letter in the model. Um, satisfaction, a sense of accomplishment. They've had success and all students are motivated by that. Even those small um, successes in confidence will lead to satis complete satisfaction overall. We are intrinsically motivated. We are extrinsically motivated. We wanna hear we've done a good job. We want a Hershey's kiss because we handed in our assignment on time. This gives us equity in the class and it also gives us ownership of what, of what we um, have accomplished and we know that it came from us. So three big things that I loved about John Keller's um, ARCS model for motivation is that first of all, it's seeped in pedagogy and research. Too many times in education, we find something that we love and we think it's just gonna work great for our classroom only to find out that it's shallow and it doesn't really do anything. And that's because it wasn't researched um, completely. And um, if you go on, Google John Keller's ARCS model for motivation, you'll find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of studies that they've done. One study that I really loved was by Liu and Chu, and it was about, um, it focused on um, ubiquitous games that were played in Taiwan by young students who were learning the English language. And um, in this one, the ARCS model worked beautifully, and it was, it's such a creative um, lesson, and, and I loved reading about that and about the success of, of um, how ARCS really worked for this group. Um, another study that I looked at was from DuPont, and it was a, a 2012 study, and it was um, based on nursing faculty and their lack of motivation to use a high fidelity simulation um, system in teaching nurses. And so the, the premise was they were looking at mo motivation um, within the nursing faculty. And what they found out was that the nursing faculty really lacked motivation to use this um, simulation system. And the, the ARCS model didn't really work well for this study. However, they did find a lot of really good information about how to motivate um, students or the, the nursing faculty to use the tool for the students. Um, one other aspect of that um, model that or that study that I liked was it showed how this study this model has been used in the Netherlands and in Thailand Thailand in South Korea and Northern Ireland and all kinds of um, for all kinds of jobs like job aids and online learning and distance learning which um, Keller later on uh, really got into the distance learning and showed how ARCS could really work for that um, the next thing is that this, the number two, is that this is cost effective and it's easy to apply. That, like I said, the book is under eighty, under hundred dollars. It ran around eighty dollars. I think if you want to buy the physical book, cheaper if you wanted uh, an ebook. And um, the principles of it are easy. There are checklists and there are surveys and there are ideas to help you get started. And you don't have to create new lesson plans. You take your old ones and you modify them um, using ARCs. Easy, easy, easy. And there's a great self-check in there. Lastly, this model follows Christian principles. And um, if, you, if you look at the attention step, Jesus got our attention. He walked on water. He turned the water into wine. Those were, uh, did all those miracles. That was good attention getting device. Um, he made his content relevant by speaking in parables and telling stories. He instilled confidence in his um, disciples and in us today reading his words. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things um, through Christ who gives me strength. And um, in, in Romans, if... Uh, God is for us, who can be against us? Those things instill confidence in the things we do in our in our day-to-day -day lives as Christians. And then lastly, satisfaction in John 
15, 7, um, he says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. So I hope that you have enjoyed this and learned something about the ARCS model. And if you are a teacher or a person who is in charge of motivating people, I hope that you will try it out. Thank you.